same thing that we just did, a frequency measure program using LabVIEW with my DAC card. Okay. So first thing, I'm going to get my while loop as usual because I always start every LabVIEW program with a while loop just because it's super easy. I'm going to go create control. Okay. Boom. I've got my uh, stop button. Okay. The next thing, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to close my palette. And I use the palette so I don't have to search for everything. And I'm going to go input DAC assistant. Okay. So I just went under express and then DAC assistant. Okay. And I'm just going to use this to do a analog voltage measurement. Okay. So this is super easy. Okay. So waiting for LabVIEW to boot up and do that is probably the longest part of this program. So I'm going to go acquire signal, analog input voltage, okay? And I plugged it in on my USB card to analog input zero. So I'm going to hit finish, okay? And it's going to think for a minute. Okay, so I've got signal input range from 10 to uh, minus 10, so I'm going to go 5 to minus 5 just because this gives you a little bit more precision. The lower you make this range, the more precise your measurement's going to be. My terminal configuration, I'm going to say let NIDAC choose. And then right here, it's already set up. I'm going to do in samples, okay? This is, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read, say, a thousand samples, okay? <coughs> You can specify the number, and I'm going to go up here to 25, 25K for my hertz. So I set 1,000 samples, and I'm going to click OK, right? So I've got my DAC assistant. It's going to be reading the, uh, my, uh, the voltages coming in from the signal generator, okay? Then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do... Uh, create a graphical indicator, okay? That's going to give me a chart on the front just so I can see what the voltages are, okay? So, super easy, right? Then I want to know what the frequency is of this, okay? So I'm going to go back under Express. I'm going to go to Signal Analysis, and I'm going to go grab Tone Measurement, which is right here, okay? I'm going to run that there, I'm going to select frequency, go OK. Then I'm going to drag my wire over here into signals, and I'm going to create an indicator here. I'm going to go uh, move this out of the way. I'm going to right click and go create a numeric indicator. Okay, It's going to be a double value. So I've got my uh, graphical indicator, I've got my frequency, Coming from tone measurement, I'm going to hit run, okay, and boom, it immediately works. It says 1300 right here, okay, I can go up to 10,000, okay, now uh, when I get up to 10,000, so let's go down here to, uh, so 9,000, it matches my frequency generator, okay, and this thing is giving me the right frequency. Okay. Now, um, let's hit stop here. Okay. On my DAC assistant, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back into preferences here. Okay, I set this at 25k, but I'm gonna actually try and go up to the maximum value, which I think is 48k. I don't actually know, but if I make a mistake, it's gonna tell me. Okay, so this gives me 48,000. Okay, and um, there's actually a way here to, um, I can do rates. So I can go create uh, a control, okay. So I've got my rate here at 48,000, okay. So the frequency is still good. I'm reading data at 48, 48 kilohertz, okay, and now... I can actually, I can increase my frequency, okay? So I can go up to 13,000, and this allows me to actually measure uh, 20,000 hertz, okay? So this is with my DAC assistant, okay?
right? So if you <laughs> compare this to the Arduino card, okay, um, the Arduino card is a lot slower, and it probably depends on a lot. A lot has to do with our software, okay? So the rate that we transfer data from the Arduino card to uh, the uh, to the computer is going to vary a lot on our settings, okay? But I've made this whole program um, a very simple program that reads a voltage and can tell you the signal. So, in terms of measuring the frequency, okay, uh, I would say that the DAC card with National Instrument wins, okay, but the advantage of the other one is you understand a lot more about serial port communication when you do this, okay, because, um, right, because a lot of times when you have a device, you don't know what's happening, right? When you, uh, let's go back to my, uh, right? With this program, you don't know what's happening under the hood, okay? This is all just basically magic to you guys, okay? Because you're just getting something from the DAC card, you have no idea what the data looks like, and you have no idea what National Instruments is doing. But, you can get a quick result from it, right? So, um, you can get a fast measurement, you can start taking data right away, and you don't have to play around with all this crap with the Arduino card. Okay? The Arduino card is nice for a lot of reasons, but these are two different avenues to kind of go at the same problem. Okay? And in your careers, you know, there's going to be a time for both of these, right? There's going to be a time for writing a program in C, and then there's a time to just go by LabVIEW and just get it over with, right? So, now the question is, right, as you guys go off into the world and uh, you go do research or you work for a company, right, which software do you think you'd want to do to, um, for any kind of problem you have to do, like, Let's take your uh, your problem with the flow sensor, right? Which do you think you'd want to try and figure out how to do it with an Arduino card, or do you think you'd want to try and do it with LabVIEW? Probably depends on the cost. Yeah. I mean, if I were to do it, I'd probably take LabVIEW, but a company doesn't want to pay for it. Right. So, you know, if you, yeah, if you think about the cost, right, LabVIEW was $5,000 initially, and then to get the, if you want the maintenance, so you get the latest version of the software, it's $1,000 every year, right? Just so you can use the software. Then the, uh, the DAC card itself was $500, right? And, um, uh, and that's for like a very low-end DAC card, right? There's, with National Instruments, there's actually no limit to how much money you can spend on a DAC card pretty much. I mean, you can, it can get really ridiculous. So, um, but the, the Arduino card was $30, right? And as we saw, if you accidentally hook up a power supply to it, right, nobody's going to be upset, right? Because it's only $30. Whereas if you fry the DAC card, that's like 500 or maybe $1,000. Yeah, but you cannot. Like, anyway, you have to use that because we want to know the network frequency. We have to... We have to connect like the Arduino card to that one, and then use that to measure. So like, no matter what we do, we still need LabVIEW. Like we cannot measure anything just with the Arduino card. We can, if we want a, a set of data points, then we need LabVIEW. If we just want to see like if something happens, you know, then. Now that that actually is not entirely true because you could you could actually write this <coughs> whole thing in. Uh, your Arduino card, right? You could actually record data, right? And then you could actually have it calculate the frequency for you. And but that means you would have to actually write line by line, you know, a way to actually calculate the frequency. Right? So you could, you know, in principle, you can do this all programmatically and see if you want to, 
right? If you go to your uh, your Arduino programming environment, right, right here, you could write a function that finds a frequency, right? Or uh, you know, there are ways with Java too. If you want to read your serial uh, port with Java, you could write a little Java applet that would make a text file from your Arduino card, right? Now, let's say you had a an Excel file, how would you guys find the, the frequency in there? Like if you just had data points. Well, let's take a look here at some Excel data that I collected on my Mac because I, uh, on my Mac, I have not figured out how to actually read uh, the Arduino card through the serial port. And so what I did was, I was like, oh, I can just copy and paste some of the data into Excel, and then I can figure out the frequency like that, right? So if you're really desperate, um, so right here, right, these are just uh, um, values that I grabbed, right? So I literally just had data coming in from the serial port, then I would copy and paste that into Excel, right? And if I have a file like this, Right, let's look at my file here. Okay, so if this is my data, right, you can look at it and you can calculate what the frequency is, right? Because it looks like a sine wave, sort of, right? So I just go here. Okay, here's this data point, and then it repeats over here. That must be my period, right? Then frequency is one over period. So you can just manually go and look at it and just get the frequency. 